How powerful would Mexico be if the United States hadn't taken over half of its territory? Learn More paints a picture of what Mexico might look like today if it had kept its original boundaries. As we explained in one of our animations, the Mexicans were left without half of their territory because of a dirty move by their neighbor. After they decided to concession some of their northern lands in the 1820s, the U.S. population that settled there began to claim the land as their own. As was to be expected, Mexico didn't accept this independence project, so the settlers looked to the United States for help, who, after a series of confrontations, ended up annexing the entire area that the Mexicans had rented. However, not content with that, the Americans declared war on their southern neighbors and settled in Mexico City until, in 1848, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed, in which Mexico was forced to accept a new northern border along the Rio Grande River. And what regions did they lose? Specifically Texas, California, New Mexico, Nevada, Utah and parts of Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas and Oklahoma. For example, California is now the most populous state in the U.S., with a total of nearly 40 million inhabitants. Texas, on the other hand, is the second largest state in the country in terms of land area. Many pundits rely on these historical episodes to say that Mexico would be a world economic power today if it had not lost these lands, especially because of the last two examples we mentioned. So, what is the true magnitude of the land taken from the Mexicans? Learn More reveals it to you. Let's look at the geography that characterizes this part of the continent in order to understand the dimension of what Mexico once was and also to be able to visualize the large amount of land that was usurped from them. After its independence in 1821, Mexico's territory covered a total of 4 million square kilometers, which is more than twice its current size. In fact, if Mexico were to maintain those dimensions today, it would be the seventh largest country in the world. On the other hand, with this reduction, Mexico now occupies only 8% of North America, even though its nearly 2 million square kilometers make it larger than countries like Indonesia, Peru, and South Africa, among others. On the other hand, we must also look at the number of inhabitants that Mexico lost after its annexation by the United States. At the time, the figure was much lower, but if we add the current number of inhabitants in the conflict region, the figure rises to a staggering total of approximately 83 million people. If this population were part of the Mexican nation, it would have a total of approximately 210 million inhabitants, moving it up to seventh place among the world's most populous countries and surpassing even the giant Brazil. However, if we talk about the rest of the countries that today make up the Americas, Mexico is also one of the most outstanding. It's in fifth place among the continent's largest countries in terms of surface area, and third in terms of population behind the United States and Brazil. Now, would this longed for territorial grandeur? Would it translate into impressive numbers? Learn More has performed the corresponding calculations. Well, it would be quite accurate if we look at it from the point of view of numbers. California, which is one of the most important economic poles of the United States and a symbol of wealth and good living, has a gross domestic product amounting to $3.2 trillion, accounting for 12% of the country's total GDP and surpassing even independent economic powers such as France, Canada, and South Korea, among others. Texas, meanwhile, is the nerve center of the energy industry in the country, both domestically and globally, and has a GDP of $1.6 trillion. Although it is lower than California's, it is also higher than that of Mexico as a whole, which is $1.3 trillion. That said, if the states of California and Texas were still part of Mexico at their current numbers, the country would be a major economic powerhouse. 
Its economy would reach an annual GDP of $5 trillion and would be the fourth largest in the world, only after such giants as the United States itself, China, and Japan. But how certain is it that things would have been like that for Mexico? The truth is that there is none. We have no way of knowing if history and the situation of the country would have improved had they kept the territory they lost. And the only thing left for us to do is to make counterfactual historical projections, that is, of things that eventually could have happened, but never did. Today, Learn More taught you that regardless of whether or not history has happened in a certain way, Mexicans surely yearn to have those territories under their control again.